sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you, that the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. With my whole heart have I sought thee, O, oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. When wisdom enters into thine heart, and knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul, discretion shall preserve thee, and understanding shall keep thee. My foot hath held his steps, his way have I kept, and not declined. Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for thy testimonies are my meditations. If you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Often, in studying the word of God, there are those who will take the Bible and make religion the reason for the season, and make religion the reason for what they do, why they do, and how they do it. It's easy to take the Word of God and to make it into a religious enterprise, something that you want to do, that sounds good, that looks good, that feels good. You could be observed as being one of those saints that God has placed in his body to be examples of righteousness. But are you using that righteousness as a club to wield and to beat others into submission to your own will and your own way? Because it's not the way of the Lord to choose those people and those things that look good, that feel good, and that seem good. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. God has chosen those things which are at times rejected of men, but are accepted by God. It's not about religion. It's not about relationship only. It is about a personal dynamic with which we have the Holy Spirit inside us that allows us to know the Word of God, to read the Word of God, to understand the Word of God, and to have the Word of God set us free. Free from doctrine, free from interpretation, free from teachers, free from pastors, free from elders, free from deacons, free from elders and free from any other thing that should separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. For if any other thing causes us to be removed from God in any way, shape, or form, then it is not God who spoke it, and it is not God who said it, but rather it is something that is interfering with the work of the Holy Spirit in your life. Don't let religious appeal or righteousness be your guide, but rather allow for the Holy Spirit who has been put here as our comforter as our teacher and as our guide, to reveal to you Jesus, that in finding Jesus, you would be set free from all these other things that might bind you to a person, to a place, to a thing, or to a religion. For without God, you can do nothing. And if you are not, if you are not having the Son in your life, then you are not free and you have not been set free. But he who has been set free is free indeed, for the Son of Man has come unto him and has revealed to him the truth. And thy word is truth. That is a fact. But it is not a truth that is chosen by each one of us to religiously tell someone else. But rather it is a revelation of God himself as he is called the Word of God and reveals himself by his Holy Spirit to the person who is seeking God. 
For without that Holy Spirit to lead a man to salvation, that man has no salvation whatsoever. For it is not in religious exercise that we find God, but it is God who exercises His will, His Spirit, and His Son in our life that causes salvation to be accomplished in us and to us. Fellow citizens with the saints, you are come unto Mount Zion, unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Our conversation, our citizenship is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. The Father hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son. As strangers and pilgrims abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. If you have made this world, if you have made this land, if you have made this city, if you have made this country your home, then you have failed the purposes of God in your life. For your citizenship is in heaven, and you are a pilgrim in this world and a sojourner passing through, who blesses those with which you come into contact with. Because your destiny is not to remain here. You are not to occupy as though you possess the land, but that you possess God, and that God created the land for his own purpose. So when you look at politics, and you look at religion, when you look at social media, when you look at socialism, when you look at governments and men, when you seek to follow any other thing except for what God wants you to do, then not only are you blind, but you are failing in what God chose you what God's directing you, what God is teaching you today. Walk in a manner that is worthy of Him, and God will bless you out of your mind. And when it's time, He will take you out of this world, because He will say, you are mine. And that nothing in this world will entrap you, nothing in this world will entice you, and nothing in this world will fool you into looking back on this world as though it, and not heaven, were your home.